August 2018 edition of the Hawaii Real Estate News Now. Uh, I'm your co-host Lane Kawoka and Dean Ueda. Are you there? I'm here. We better, uh, we better wrap this up quick. It's getting kind of late there. <laughs> We're going to be talking about market stats, upgrading your house with some uh, different kind of contingencies I never heard of, and then some economy news. Uh, talk about the trade wars, and we'll talk about um, how you guys can join our network. Of course, here's that legal disclaimer here. Always consult your professional tax or legal because we are not uh, CPAs. Well, Dean is a CPA, but he's not a practicing one. Apparently. Yeah. Thanks for that disclaimer. I appreciate that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, Dean, yeah. you're, the, uh, you're the practicing real estate agent, too, on the side gig. And uh, yep. a lot of respect for those people with the side gigs out here. It's, uh, not a, I know a lot of people don't like to talk about it too much, but here you are making your videos. So I give you props for uh, putting yourself out there. But what's happening in the uh, Oahu real estate these days? Okay, so again, as as we mentioned in the prior episodes, we're a little bit of lag on this information. We're talking about um, June info right now. Um, July info information is probably not going to come out for another week or two. So um, on the single family side, we, we see a, a decline in, in terms of the prices as well as closed sales. Um, it's real small though, yeah. And on the median condo prices and closed sales, we see it going the opposite way actually. And again, talking about five and 2%, so relatively small. Um, days on market, you can see it, it's going up a little bit and percentage wise, it's a lot, but I think we've mentioned it before too, Lane, where you know, it's still within way within a, a month in terms of when the average point of when we uh, it's listed versus to the point that it goes into contract into escrow. So we're still way with uh, in a month in terms of 16 and 18 days for single family and condo. So it's it's still a very strong seller's market to to, to say the least. Totally within like the band what it normally is for this time. Yeah, 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 and um. In a few slides later, I was going to I'll touch upon um, seasonality. Um, so now we're looking at new listings. Uh, this doesn't tell us too much. Maybe next time I'll take this slide out, but I, for consistency purposes, uh, single family homes, uh, we see it um, jump up uh, for new listings in May and then go back down in June. Uh, flip to that, we have the condo and townhouses, which um, actually go down in May and then jump up again in June. But I actually wanted to focus on the, the next two slides. Uh, First of all, being the two-year um, month, so this is the months of inventory for uh, tracked for two years. So basically, at um, any given time, if we were to take the inventory that we have, it based on our um, sales rate, it tells us how much inventory, how long the the available inventory will last. So you know this slide is a little bit hard to see, but if it, um, I just wanted to focus on on, I guess those last six months from, was it around January, December, January, 2018, we see it both um, single family and condo, months of inventory going um, steadily up for the most part. And um, looking back to, to prior years, you can see it, it didn't, it wasn't as, as steep of a slope. So, you know, if you're one of those technical analysts for, for, from the finance field, you, you might be saying, you know, it's, it's going above the previous peak. So um, again, I'm not saying this is like a giant correction or anything, but it's something's happening, I think. Um, and if you look at the prior year, you see it around June is when it starts to flip the other way. So in the next couple of months, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Um, on the next slide, we'll see uh, something consistent again. We see active listings on a steady increase for the last five months and it looks a little bit steeper and more consistent than in, in prior years. Um, so again, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but um, you know, active listings is going up and you know, maybe slightly tilting towards the other way in terms of um, not as strong as a seller of a seller's market. So I guess my yeah. point. I mean, and it can also mean the complete opposite too, right? Like if, 
in the past decade since 2008, I think the story was like people just weren't moving out of their homes because a lot of people were underwater from like 2008 to 2013, 14. So that was why they weren't selling. That was why they weren't moving up to that, you know, upgraded house. So everybody was just kind of staying put in their house, sort of like under house arrest. So that's why it was the inventory was very low. Um, so you would think that, you know, as, as there's more inventory, there's more properties out there, which would drive the prices. Um, if there's more inventory, that means there's more availability. So it'd be driving the prices down, but it may be the opposite. It may be the sign of, now, finally, people are are not underwater on their mortgages, and there just might be more you know, appetite for people to move, kind of like pent up demand. Right, right. Yeah. No, that, that that's true too. So I, I don't um, know. We'll yeah, see. yeah. That, that that's true too. And um, also keeping in mind that this is for Oahu, right? Versus like maybe on a national level, that 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 it's a very good point. Um, um, yeah. Also, like that, maybe- like that phenomenon with um, you know, two thousand eight happened, and then. 9, 10, a lot of people lost their jobs or, I mean, everybody felt the pinch. So their washing machine, nobody replaced their washing machines or something like that, like a semi big transaction. They would just fix it, but right, you right. can only fix your washing machine for so long. Mm-hmm. Oh, that yeah. Up the man. So maybe yeah, that's too. what's kind of happening. Yeah. And there's so many variables too, right? That it's hard to say one thing is indicative of what's going on, you know, you, you, then you go talk about interest rates trends too, right? And how that's on a steady, um, it's going up. So, and the risk of it going up is even greater. So I don't know people could be, you know, trying to buy quicker, but yeah, it's right. always, it's all, um, there's so many different variables too. So. Right. But Everybody likes fun. to geek out on this stuff. And, and that, <laughs> this is what sells articles, right? Like I just read an article saying that the, uh, economists think that 2020 is the next recession well it's like yeah it isn't until it isn't right you just keep updating the article to be 2021 2022 nobody knows yeah right right i mean and i mean funny thing is we we, i'm also seeing this um on a micro level um i guess like in mililani town where i'm preparing to list a home the next week or two and we're seeing that there's a little bit more inventory or you know competition for us uh, on the listing side, so it's it brings us challenges in terms of you know how we're going to price out our our listing for the quick sale. Um, in in this scenario, we're trying to do um, get a, get a, a quick sale. Um, it's kind of related to our next conversation uh, that we're going to talk about, which is um, some home buyer tips and. How to upgrade your home and just move once. Um, I was gonna say that this, it, there's no contingencies in this scenario, but these scenarios, but uh, there are some small contingencies in terms of putting in contingencies, meaning on uh, the off putting in the purchase contract in and um, contingency on sale of the other property. So I'm gonna talk about uh, rent back clauses and the other scenario is alternative financing. So. Yeah. And this is like super common, right? When people are kind of stepping up, they got that starter home, they maybe yep. bought it for half a million and now it's worth 600. Yeah, it's very, that next one. yeah, it's very common. In fact, I helped someone with the rent back clause last year um, to upgrade and then helping somewhere now with the alternative financing. Uh, so if you start with the rent back clause, basically we're taking advantage of um, it being a seller's market and uh, the plan is to sell the current house first. And what I mean by saying taking advantage of the seller's market is that um, theoretically the seller has has the the leverage, right? Because you have multiple buyers trying to vie for for these properties. So um, keeping that in mind, if it, if it is seller's market like how it is now, basically you're letting the potential buyers know that the seller would want to rent back the, the unit or the house uh, for whatever's uh, legally possible from the buyer's lender. And um, of course, you're gonna include that in the contract, right? So you're gonna set, set the, the rent as well as um, all those terms. And 
as you're doing so, you're going to be looking for your new place to move, your new home. And um, my recommendation was you, you'd make the offer for the new place once you're, um, you've moved along um, fairly far with the sale of the current place. And the reason why I say that to make the offer after the fact is because your offer will have a contingency on the sale of your current house, which it theoretically weakens the offer. But if the seller, the seller's agent knows that you know you're you're far along, you've passed your um, contingency, like your J1 inspection contingencies and things, then they'll know that you know that you can provide. And if, if you can provide them assurance and com comfort that you're going to close, then that makes that um, makes your offer stronger and kind of plays down the contingency, right? So were so, people doing this before, like kind of under the table or? Well, I mean, this, this is not uh, under the table anyway, because you have the, um, those terms are spelled out in your purchase contract when, when you're, when you're selling, right? Oh, so you're asking if, oh yeah. I'm, yeah I mean, it's a good idea, right? Right, I mean, I right. People, yeah. You know, I, I would hope so. You, you Like you said, the, the, the thinkers out there would, would be looking at ways to do this. Uh, hopefully the right way and uh, yeah, then that way you, contract. right right so and then so last year we were able to do this um, I think September 1st we were we had closed on the sales side and, and um, luckily on the purchase we, we were able to close on 22 days later so basically they were they didn't they had to move once and they only had to pay like a, a month of rent back to the the new buyer of the old house so it worked out pretty well and it it this again this comes with challenges it, it's not easy because when you're on the buying side you you're you're going against you know multiple potentially multiple offers so you need to keep that in mind and strategize when you're coming in with your pricing and um you know that kind of thing so yeah all right next one so, here so the next one is actually um pretty cool it's alternative financing as that's just what i'm coining it but uh, basically you're going on and this time you're going to buy your new house first and there's no contingency of sale of your current house but your the intention is to sell the old one right away um and the way you do that is basically you're going to fund the, the down payment with funds from like your heloc in your your current house and or you know take getting um, taking borrowing from your 401k or your other retirement, assuming that they allow that. Um, yeah, and usually you can take like half the value or something like that, and you're kind of paying the interest back to yourself. Yeah, that, that's a cool thing, right? So every plan has has a, is structured differently and um, may or may not allow to do this. Um, but like you said, you're you're paying yourself back with you're paying your, basically you're paying yourself back, right? In interest and. In, in this time, day and age, or in this current market condition, is kind of neat because then you're you're kind of diversifying, right? Because you're taking money out of the mutual funds that it was probably in, and it's going into a note, basically. So it's kind of like diversification of of your 401k portfolio, yeah. If you look at right. it that way. Right. And again, we're not tax consultants here, but yep. um, I I've done this before um, to buy a rental property, mm -hmm. and. I kind of used it to, uh, I kind of said I was living there so I could kind of fly under the radar <laughs> with, uh, um, probably shouldn't say that on the internet, but yeah. hey, you got to do what you got to do when you're getting started. <laughs> right, <laughs> but, right, right, right. You know, especially if it's, you know, in this case, it'd be a primary residence. So you're definitely not really um, doing anything shady here. It's totally within the rules. And I would just Google uh, the 401k. There's, there's two sets of requirements. There's kind of the federal rules, which are going to be more lenient. And your employer's rule, which are, which is going to be a little step above, or might be the federal requirements too. So. Yeah, right. And then you're also limited by maybe limited by what your 401k um, program allows you to do. Yeah. And yeah. Payback period, interest rates, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So once you fund um, the purchase of new place, then you can go ahead and um, list and sell your old house. Um, so that that sale would also have the contingency too, right? But the great thing is that when you 
you some people don't realize this but you know what once you sell your old house you can go back to the the lender of your your new house and you take you know you get the funds from the proceeds from the sale of the old house and you can pay down your mortgage uh your new mortgage and um pay them a little bit of money it's, i don't know anyway i hear between 200 and 500 dollars and they re-amortize that mortgage so basically you keep the same rates you keep the same uh, payment period it just reduces your monthly payments yeah so that you don't have to um, keep on having that high monthly payments i think some some people go ahead and pay down their uh, mortgage and don't re-amortize and then there's they still have that um, high monthly payment so the re-amortization reduces your monthly which i mean you you if you can handle not not doing the reamortization and and honing down that that mortgage and that that's fine too. But I think Dan, you and I, we we have yeah, different I'm gonna, theories. I'm right? gonna keep my mouth shut on this, but I'm, I'm, <laughs> that's for another uh, presentation. Yeah, right? that's yeah, for yeah, the yeah. Uh, discussion at REI Aloha Beer Beer Lab meetup. Yeah, those are those are yeah. fun. So. But you know, determine what your goals are, right? If it's to pay down debt, um, you know, it's one thing. But if it's to get financial freedom, it's another. Yep, yep, exactly. Cool. Yep, so that's my tips for the day. And so um, if you guys want real estate investing uh, education, check out my podcast, Google, iTunes, um, YouTube channel, and then I'll talk about the Ari Aloha. And you guys can get my free book by texting ebook to 587-317-6099. But uh, today I'm going to talk about the trade wars that have been sort of happening and you know, Mr. Uh, Donald Trump, uh, Dean's good buddy there. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's not get political yeah, here. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I'm not very political here. I don't even vote, to be honest. <laughs> but, you know, politics aside, I think it's important to kind of know what's happened, where you, whether you agree with it or not. You know, and I think I think the important thing is to know and to be able to shift your portfolio in the right way, or at least understand what's happening. But uh, Mr. Trump, you know, he's he's been kind of playing hardball in the political space, and he's been imposing these taxes on the EU, Mexico, Canada, on things like steel, agriculture, and other products. So um, you know, EU is kind of retaliating in the same way. Uh, Mexico is retaliating on U.S. steel and farm products. Canada is retaliating with U.S. steel, aluminum, and other. On uh, June, late June, U.S. threats in the 20% tariff on European cars. <laughs> so this is kind of the, the stuff that's going on. Um, you know, there's a 25% percent um, steel tax, 10% aluminum tax, and you know, I mean, I'm in the construction industry, and you know, when we're putting together a project whether it's a bridge or even a highway or sidewalk, the price of steel is a huge contingency in the project. project. I mean, you, you think it's just one piece, but it's a big raw material that, that um, it's greatly influenced by these prices. And a 25% tax slapped on the top of it greatly affects how things change. I think we all kind of give the, the government crap that like, oh, this project is taken forever. But I'm like, you know, give, give us in the construction industry a break because this is the stuff that we have to deal with, all these unknowable factors and uncontrollable <laughs> factors. Yeah. Um, we don't know how this is going to lead to, you know, may lead to hoarding of material and, or less jobs, um, you know, because of less production hmm. in the U.S. Like, we don't know. Just like how, you know, we're talking about, like, the inventory going up and down. We don't know how it's going to play out. But and and there, we also don't changing. know... Yeah, I was, I was sorry, but I was just also wondering, you know, how much of this, especially the threatening side, is is kind of like, you know, our way of posturing so that we can get things, you know, in other ways. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I mean, I think, I mean, I don't want to get political or anything like that, but you know, things are changing, right? Like the whole North Korea um, issue. I think the the market is is steadily getting better and better, and I think a lot of these these trade wars. I think a lot of the economists are feeling that it, it's making the economy look stronger. That's generally how most people look at this stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, what it means for your home prices, what it means for, you know, if you're a new home buyer looking to buy a home, that means that, hey, you know, this is just, this is not going to go anywhere. Um, you know, of course, it can, a bubble can bust at any point, but hey, you know, people will need a place to live, right? Yeah. That's the fundamentals. Um, but you guys can, you know, come out and hang in with us um, in person and talk more real estate investing, you know, not just your own home buying, but we've got a couple, couple groups here. That's all, it's all one group, but I've got the Facebook page here on the left side. We've got about 264 members and then the meetup group, which the same group, like I said, 192 members. So you guys can interact with us there. Um, yeah. And, and you know, let me assure you guys that if you guys come out, Lane is a lot geek, less geeky in person, right? Yeah, and with a few beers, a few beers in him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are some pictures. Yes, we have real people coming out to these things, and and again, this is the passive buy and hold crowd that me and Dean are kind of a part of. Mm. Uh, we don't we don't flip houses, we don't wholesale houses. We, you know, save our money like little boys and girls, and uh, <laughs> um, just buy just see rentals. Not just see real. There you go. Yeah, buy rental property. But um, reiloha.com is the URL. It may not be set up by the time you uh, you watch this, but I I just paid a web developer to work start working on this, so it should be up. Oh, soon. cool! You gotta share that with me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my email address is lane at simplepassivecashflow.com. Dean's is deanwood at gmail.com. If you guys need a agent, uh, talk to Dean. If you guys want to talk real estate investing, give me a call or give me an email. And then check out the rest of these videos on YouTube. Any uh, any parting thoughts there, Dean? Or we'll see everybody next time. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. See you guys next time. All right. Well. Cool.